Today marks the 23rd anniversary of the day the world changed forever, 9-11-2001. And if you're old enough to remember that day, you probably have your own story of the moment you saw the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Today, the former commander of the operation inside Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado Springs spoke during the 9-11 commemoration ceremony at Memorial Park in Colorado Springs to talk about those moments as his team responded. He said the most accurate source of information about what was happening that day was coming from right inside Cheyenne Mountain today. He issued a call to action for all of us to not allow history to repeat itself. We can start by ensuring that our kids and grandkids history book tell the actual story of 9-11 based on ground truth. We must vow to stomp out revisionist or apologist accounts that veer away from the truth or shift blame from other than the cold-blooded terrorists who perpetrated these heinous attacks. I recently sat down with retired Air Force Lieutenant General Mike Gould to learn more about what his team had to do the moment our nation was under attack. My name's Mike Gould. Uh, on September 11th, 2001, I was the commander of the Cheyenne Mountain Operations Center. Retired Air Force Lieutenant General Mike Gould was headed to work inside Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado Springs when the first plane flew into the World Trade Center. And I got into the command center and uh, most of the news initially was coming off the television reports. Did you think we were under attack? Well, we knew uh, pretty early that there was a coordinated attack. And then, of course, when the second plane hit, it became evident. The daily mission for the 300 to 400 people working there was to provide warnings for any attacks. And our job there was to... Uh, using a network of uh, sensors around the globe, uh, whenever any event happened, we would uh, advise then the commander of, of NORAD, U.S. Space and Air Force Space, which at the time was, was one person, General Ed Eberhardt. The five-acre complex inside the mountain was originally built in response to the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. We always envisioned in the way of an air attack were uh, Soviet bombers coming over um, the North Pole, uh, which is the closest way to, to get to North America. And our checklists were designed to uh, respond to an attack like that. And uh, this was not that type of an attack. As they opened up a direct phone line to the Federal Aviation Administration, he says General Eberhardt made the decision to ground all flights. At the same time, they knew they had to get fighter aircraft heading to the hijacked planes. Part of our mission there at NORAD was to uh, um, activate these alert aircraft and get them airborne and um, start to look for who else is maybe going to do this. Was that your decision that day? Well. It, it was my recommendation to uh, the commander, General Everhart, the four star. And uh, we, we uh, were able to scramble alert aircraft on the East Coast. The team also started looking west to the Pacific for any other possible threats. They had their eyes on one plane the FAA could not reach that departed Seattle headed for Denver. We thought, well, perhaps this, this guy is headed for the mountain. and. Uh, we ran our checklist for that, and uh, you've probably been in there and you've seen this three foot thick uh, door. Uh, well, for the first time in, uh, for an actual event, we ordered the doors closed, thinking it will provide some sort of protection for those of us in the mountain who needed to continue the mission. Eventually, the pilot responded and the plane was diverted. When did you finally take a breath? right now. I, I don't know. I really don't. The lessons learned that day would eventually be passed on to the cadets he oversaw as the superintendent of the Air Force Academy from 2009 to 2013. What did you want the cadets to know about that day? I didn't really have to remind them. In, uh, at the 10-year anniversary in 2011, um, was it right in the middle of my time as superintendent and uh, Don Addy, a local um, hero, had, had procured uh, steel beams from uh, the World Trade Center. And um, he has, I think there are six monuments here in town. 
one of them was at the Air Force Academy, and we dedicated that on 9-11-2011. Uh, and the cadet wing commander was a young lady. She was 10 years old when 9-11 occurred, and she gave a, a really a moving and meaning, meaningful account of why she signed up to serve. It was because of that day. Those cadets now being trained to replace the leaders of today who have, like Gould, dedicated their careers to defending our nation. We're really proud of some work that's gone on over the past seven, eight, nine years at the academy to establish an institute for future conflict where the, the entire curriculum and, and all the activity, activities they do in their military training and academics is focused on these emerging technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence, hypersonics, quantum computing, um, these, these types of technologies that are going to be our weapons of war in the future. And the cadets at the academy are some of the warriors of the future. They go through four years of intense academics, military training, and athletic competition, just like they do at all of our service academies. News 5 is so grateful to them and to all of our military members and veterans who have sacrificed so much protecting our nation both before and after the 9-11 attacks.